Hasidic Gems on Parshish Shmois. It says in the Pusik <coughs> that Moshe Rabbeinu Vayetze El Echov, Vayigdal Moshe Vayetze El Echov, he went out to his brethren, Vayarbisif Loisam, and he saw their burdens, their hard work. Vayar Ish Mitzri, and he saw an Egyptian man, Make, as Make Ish Ivri Me'echov. He sees an Egyptian hitting another uh, a Jew. So the Pasuk says, Vayifen Choy V'choy, he turned this way and that way. Vayar ki'ain to see if anybody is is watching. Vayar ki'ain ish. He saw that there's no person. Vayaches hamitzri vayitmeneu b'choyo. So Moshe Rabbeinu killed this mitzri. And he buried him in sand, in the sand. That's the simple. The Hasidic Torah are saying like this. They're saying, they take out the word Vayifen to learn this thing. Just Koi Vachoi. Here and there. And they interpret that to mean whatever situation a person finds himself to be, whether koi, whether good, whether uvein, uvein chalila ro, whichever situation the person finds himself, everything is going well, everything is not going well, a person must believe and see vayar Ki ein ish, that there is no human being running this world. Everything is coming from Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So whether things are going well or whether things are going not well, ki ein ish, there is no human being running. We have to understand that. We have to believe that. That the only one running this world is the Rebbeinu Shlom himself. Okay, we should be Zoycha to understand this and believe it. As is Hashem. Amen for Amen. So the Pasa continues. I think that's a shtickle classic. That's a classic. Classic Hasidic gem. Vayar ki einish, the Pasuk we just read, the end of that Pasuk. Vayar ki einish, and he saw that there's no person. Nobody was watching as he was about to kill this Mitzri. Vayar ki ein ish, vayach Mitzri. And he killed the Egyptian. That's the simple. The Hasidic Torah, the Hasidic gems say, if somebody is humble, he ain't ish if he's not a human if he's not a he's not a man he's he's right that's a way of expressing how humble he is he ain't ish he's not a human being he's 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 low he's he there's nothing he ain't ish he's not a, he's not a person if he has that schus of being humble by he will be zeicha to beat the evil, evil um, um, to be menatzeach over all evil. He'll be he'll be able. To, he'll have the schus of of hitting the mitzri, of beating the mitzri, if he's humble, if he has that midah toiva, ish. 
if he is able to view himself as a humble humble human being, then he'll have this chos to beat the enemy. We should be zeichet to this, amen v'yamen. We should be zeichet to humility. I think this is also a classic. Classic Hasidic gem. Continuing with Hasidic gems on Pashas Shmois. So it says in the Torah, that the Klal Yisrael was were being um, were being uh, treated terribly by the Egyptians. Vatal shavosam el Hashem minhu avoda. Their screaming went up to Hashem from the work, the hard work, they went through tremendously hard work, Vayizoku, and they screamed to Hashem. That's the simple. The Hasidic gems say like this, that their screaming went up to Hashem more than the Avoida. You think Avoida means the hard work that they were doing in the fields, the hard work that they were doing for the Egyptians? The Egyptians? Avoida means Avoida Hashem. It means davening and, and, and learning. So it says in the Pesach, Vatal Shavosam, El Hashem Min Huavedo the screaming to Hashem from their hearts was more more Mikubelas by Akarish Barhu more than the Avoidas Hashem that they were davening. When they screamed from the bottom of their hearts at what was going to them, what was happening to them in, 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 in Mitzrayim. It was more deep. It was deeper than than the Avoida that they put in to, to davening Tashem. When you daven from your own heart, because things hurt, it, it could go straight to Hashem more, more, than, more than actually davening, formally davening. <coughs> I think that's also a classic. Continuing with Hasidic gems. So it says that Moshe Rabbeinu was, he went, he came, El Har Helokim Choreva. Hine he saw Belabas Aish Mitochasne. He saw a sneb a snetri, a bush of thorns that was f- on fire where the bush was burning Fahasne a nenu ukol, and the burning and the and the um, the bush, the bush of thorns, was not being consumed, it was not being burnt up. That's the simple. The Hasidic Shetayla are telling us a person could be boyer boesh. He could be burning, burning from fire. He's full of spirituality. He's full of spirituality and he's burning, burning to serve Hashem. Nevertheless, he could 
that same person hasne einenu uko. The thorn bush is not being consumed, meaning his bad midos. He could be serving Hashem with all his heart and his soul, but he has bad midos. And the bad midos, the thorn bush, is not being consumed. It's still there with him. If if a person, even a Godel Batoira, even a Tzaddik, He's boyer ba'ish. He's burning with fire to serve Hakadosh Baruch Hu. But the bad midos is still within him. So everybody has to work on their midos. Everybody. We should be zayche to be able to overcome midos royce. And I think that this is also a classic, a Hasidic classic. Okay, one more, and we will call it a day. So it says in the Torah that Klai Yisrael Pari, Pari claimed that Moshe Rabbeinu was was um, Al Tafriu. Don't dis- don't disturb the people from doing their work. And he said that they're just lazy and they don't want to work. And that's why. He Parai proclaimed that we're not we're not going to give them tevin straw anymore to make the bricks. They have to find their own bricks. Because they're lazy and they're not working hard enough, that's why that's why they're not that's why they find time to, to complain about what Pare is doing to them. So he says he says and any no saying Lochem Tevel. Koyama Pare. Ainani Noisain Lochem Tevin, I'm not gonna give them straw. They have to find their own. Atem Lachu Kahu Lachem Tevin go find your own straw and still produce the exact amount of bricks that you had to uh produce uh, that you had to um, make when I gave you the Tevin. Trying to make them work harder. So therefore, he wanted to give them that that, that he want he, he proclaimed that they have to find their own bricks and still make the same amount of bricks of tough straw, but still make the same amount of bricks that they always made. Uh, when he did give them the tevin to get them to work harder, that's what Pare's strategy was. That's the simple. Ask, why didn't he do something different, Pare? He could have given them the tevin. He could have given them the straw, not withheld the straw from them. He could have given them the straw and say that you have to do double the amount of bricks that you did when when I gave you the straw. That will get them to work harder. Okay, they should... Um, double the amount of bricks 
in order to make it harder for them to be able to produce the bricks that he wanted. So why didn't he do that? Why didn't, why didn't he double, why didn't he rather double the amount of straw? And the Hasidic Shetunalach answer this because not to give them bricks would make them worry if they would be able to find enough straw to make the bricks. The daiga, the worry on their minds to be able to, to worry about having to uh, find the right amount of bricks, that worry is more more stressful than 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 if he would have given them um, the bricks and asked them to make double. So we should be Zerha to be able to fulfill most of these Hasidic gems today are classics. I think they're classics. And we should be zarecha, all the musr that lies within them, to fulfill them. Amen v'amen.